So now we're actually going to go through the steps that are involved in doing the uh, draw up of the medicine and then we'll do the injection in just a moment. So the first thing I say is you should always have your band-aid ready to go. You would be unwrapping your syringe, getting that all set. The first thing to do is to take the testosterone bottle and if it's brand new you're going to be grabbing this with your fingernail and just peeling off the top and once it's off, like I said, you're going to throw it away because it's not going to go back on. Then even though this is a brand new bottle, we're gonna clean it three times with alcohol swabs. So here's the swab. There is a tiny pair of scissors with a dotted line on the side, but you can ignore that. The easiest way to open it is just grab it firmly from the edge, rip across the center, the swab comes out. And then you're gonna take the first swab and just make good contact with the top of that bottle, give it a good rub. And we're gonna do that two more times. So that bottle is now clean and the top will have a little bit of alcohol residue on it, but that'll be drying out while we're getting our syringe ready. So then to put the syringe together with the needle, with this type of threaded style, you're gonna make contact and then give it about two thirds of a turn until you feel like it stops. And then good uncapping technique is to take the needle and syringe in the hands that are opposite, pull apart and do it this way. What you don't want to do is you don't wanna do one-handed uncapping where you take your hand and do something like this, pulling it off with one hand or pulling it off with your hand over the needle because if the needle touches your skin, obviously it's no longer sterile. And then once we've actually taken the needle and the cap is off, we're gonna put as much air in the syringe as we're going to be taking medicine out of the bottle. So in this instance, we're gonna do a 100 milligram injection and recall that for each 0.1 milliliter quantity, there's a 20 milligram amount of medicine in that. So 100 milligrams is a 0.5 um, quantity of liquid. The other thing is that the syringe itself, when you look at the stopper, it has kind of two lines on it and really you want to make sure that the top of the plunger aligns with the 0.5 demarcation. So that may be a little bit hard to see, but just bear in mind that you want the amount of liquid to be 0.5 uh, when you're doing the draw up. So you then take the needle and grab the bottle and you can either do this on the counter you can do it with your hands but you just want to make contact with the top of that rubber stopper and plunge the needle in just like that and then you typically turn the bottle upside down one of the important things about such a small bottle is if you push the needle all the way up inside like this after probably the first injection that will be above the level of the liquid inside the bottle. So it's really important to only put the needle in just as far as you need to, to make sure that it's well underneath the level of the liquid. So now that the needle is in and it's well below the level of liquid in the bottle, we're basically going to push up on the plunger, which you can see bubbling up inside the bottle. And then we're going to draw down on the plunger. It's going to then start filling into the syringe. I always tell people to overfill the syringe, so I'm actually drawing back to 0.8 right now. And the reason for that is because there is a little bit of air here at the top of the, of the syringe. And the reason to overfill it is because now that we're at 0.8, we can go back to 0.5. That pushes the air back up inside the bottle and will leave us with just 0.5 or 100 milligrams of actual liquid inside the syringe itself. So that means we're all ready and we can basically then turn the syringe over and remove it from the top of the bottle. Before you actually take the needle off of the syringe, it's important to remember there is a lot of medicine inside the metal shaft of the needle as well as inside the hub that's screwed on. We don't want to waste that. So before you actually take that needle off, you're going to be backing down on the plunger again, going back to 0.7 or 0.8 in this instance, but about three tenths of a milliliter of air to make sure that you've pulled all the medicine down into the syringe. And at that point, then you can take off that needle. We're going to then exchange it for the smaller needle that we'll use for the injection itself. And once again, it's about two thirds of a turn to get it locked on really nicely. And then we're going to uncap one fell swoop. Um, and then we're going to advance the plunger back up to chase all of that extra air back out so that we're priming the needle. And we're going to keep going until we see just a little bit of liquid coming out the tip of the needle. So there's a little ball of liquid that's now formed on the end of the needle, which means there's no more air left in the syringe. It's also good to know that if there's any bubbles that are in the liquid that you've drawn into your syringe, if they're small, it's probably not a big deal. But if you see larger bubbles, you should tap the side of the syringe to try to chase those up. And you can go up and down a couple times with the plunger if you need to, to make sure those are all gone. So now 
this syringe is ready to go. Uh, we're going to be using this for an injection in just a moment. And when we do, there are a couple things that I like to talk about, and that will be the angle of approach for going into the skin. So now we're ready to do the injection. And what I usually tell patients to do first is to mark a location where they're going to do the injection. You can do an injection anywhere that you can pinch an inch. So for instance, here, there's plenty of fat to do an injection. Over here, people are typically a little bit thinner and it might be harder to do an injection, but we'll talk about how to do it in those locations. And the love handle is also fair game if you would like to do that. Another thing is to make sure that you move the injection around because if you're doing the injection in the same place week after week, that place will get sore. So I like to take the end of the needle that was actually threaded onto the syringe and use that to make a dot on the abdomen. So just press it firmly into the skin It'll leave a little round circle like this. That's a nice target so that you can pay attention to where you're wiping with an alcohol swab. So then again, it's three swabs. Start in the middle of the spot, go around in a circle, getting a little bit larger as you go. You're gonna do that three times. So as we then wait for that to dry, one of the things I like to suggest is that when you hold the syringe, you can figure out what's comfortable for you but you need to grip it firmly, and typically you're gonna be using one finger to push on the plunger. There are these wings on the back of the syringe. Those are nice for kind of gripping your fingers onto. And when you push in, you can push as hard as you like, go as fast as you like. It's only gonna go in one speed, which is just based on the caliber of the needle that's being used. The other thing is that the needle is only 5 eighths of an inch long, and we wanna do an injection one inch deep. So we are gonna be pushing the plastic into the skin about 3 eighths of an inch further to make sure we're deep enough. We typically don't prescribe the longer needles because they're psychologically less comfortable, even though they really do feel the same when you have a larger and longer needle. So when you do the injection, you can see the spot right here that we've made that circle. Basically, I'm gonna pull the skin outward away from the belly, and when we go in, bracing the arm on the opposite side makes it nice so that you can just move your wrist to get in. And when you go in, you basically want to get as close as you can to the skin and then enter in one movement. You don't want to peck at the surface of the skin because obviously for each time you touch the needle to the skin, you're going to be feeling a little prick. So I always tell people to grip firmly and actually cause some pain with the pinching hand because that distracts from the pain of the actual needle entering the skin. Once the needle breaks through the skin, there's no pain as you slide in. So bear that in mind as well. So you can see the circle here. My needle is in position, just giving a good pinch and then moving the needle right through the skin. Rather than stopping on the surface like that, you actually do want to dimple in a little bit. So you can kind of see now the plastic is indenting the skin to a certain extent. And at that point, you can then start pushing on the plunger, doing the injection. And then you're gonna to count to five before you actually pull out. So we're gonna give that a four, three, two, one, and then pull out and you're done. So if there is bleeding, have a Band-Aid close by. You can certainly put that on if you'd like. If you don't see any bleeding at all, you probably don't need to use it, but it's at least nice to have it close by when you're ready. So once you're done with your injection, remember that you're going to be throwing the needle itself into a sharps container like this one here. And it's a little bit more difficult to try to unscrew the needle from the end of the syringe. But if you do put the top back on, you can actually use that to form a grip on that plastic hub and then unscrew. And then when you're ready to throw it away and you're doing this at home, I would suggest it might be worth just throwing away the needle itself because if you do just the needle, it'll take you almost forever to fill up the sharps container that you have at home. You don't need to throw either the cap or the syringe itself into the sharps container. It's really just the needle itself, like I said. So we just throw that in and off it goes. Once your sharps container is full, you'll need to take it to a hazardous waste site. Usually most cities will have that. You can also sometimes take it back to the pharmacy and they'll charge you a nominal fee to dispose of it for you. So the last thing I'd like to say in summary is that if you do the injections at home, this technique can be used for both estrogen and testosterone injections. If you also notice that there's any redness, swelling, discomfort, or itching, or a knot forms underneath the skin the day after you do the injection, or even a couple days later, you should always let your physician know. Sometimes there can be a sensitivity or allergy to the oil that the medicine is floated in, 
and physicians can change the formulation so that it's more agreeable for you. So this concludes our subcutaneous testosterone injection instruction video. I hope you found it helpful.